So Melissa, you also work at Pine Tree and you have um, a lot of experience working with survivors of domestic abuse, sexual assault, and um, both in the family law context and with protection order cases. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what Pine Tree, a uh, Pine Tree attorney's role would be in um, assisting a survivor in the protection order process. Yeah, so usually when we work with survivors, the advocate has already helped the survivor file for the protection order. So they've gone to court with them, helped them fill out the paperwork. Usually they have a temporary order and they have a court date. And at that point, the advocate can refer the case to Pine Tree. And so when they refer it, um, they'll ask your permission first for the survivor and then um, send over some basic information. One of our paralegals then will reach out to the survivor um, and call them and gather a little bit more information about their case um, and about some financial information and basic information about your household. Um, and then set you up for a consultation with me or one of the other attorneys. Um, and then we would do a consultation with a survivor um, and usually at a minimum we're able to give some information about what to expect at court and give some advice about a case um, but a lot of times we're able to fully represent people and so that means that we can file motions on their behalf we can negotiate for a protection order on their behalf and if there has to be a final hearing we can represent them at the hearing so we're making an opening statement and a closing argument we're doing cross-examination of the defendant um, and we're doing a direct examination of the survivor which means it can make it a little bit easier because instead of having to remember your whole story you're just doing a question and answer um, with me or one of the other attorneys um, as part of that hearing. Wonderful. But I try to give people a lot of information about what to expect at court um, and I think that Negotiations for protection orders are sometimes stressful because a lot of times we could be negotiating things that are really important like um, temporary custody of children or where um, the plaintiff and the defendant are going to be living if they were living in the same place before the protection order. Um, and so it can be a really emotional and it can be a really stressful process. And so when I'm seeing that somebody is getting overwhelmed, I'm really trying my best to give breaks. Um, again, I think we've talked about, unfortunately, this is a quick process, fortunately and unfortunately, yes. right? Because we know that somebody can go from filing a protection order to getting a final order in just a couple of weeks and be done with that process and have protection for two years or longer if it's an extended order. Um, and that's really amazing. The downside to that is it happens very quickly. And so a lot of times if you are representing someone, we have to get a lot of information quickly and we have to do a lot of negotiations in a short period of time. Um, and so I know both of us work really hard to try to balance giving a lot of information, giving space, giving time, but also um, making sure that we're helping people move forward and try to get their orders if that's what they want. Yeah, there's so much that's going on all at once. Just the very act of figuring out where to meet, it's, I think you're right, it's really helpful to talk about the logistics that can be planned for because sometimes, you know, the negotiation process, like you said, can be um, a lot of back and forth and we don't necessarily know what the result is going to be. So as much as we can sort of account for the things that we can we can guarantee, like here's what it's going to look like when you get there, I think that helps a lot as well. Um, you have mentioned that during consultations that you sort of do your best to give space to the survivor so that they're comfortable um, talking about things when they're ready. Let's say that somebody wanted to share something, but then they didn't want that to be shared in court. Is that also a possibility? Yeah, absolutely. So we talked a lot about the survivor being in the driver's seat for a protection order. So. Um, you and I, I'm sure, have both worked with survivors, I know, because you've talked about it, who have experienced sometimes multiple types of abuse. So um, may have experienced domestic violence and also experienced sexual assault and don't want to talk about the sexual assault in if there's a hearing. Um, and, you know, we have enough of a basis to get a protection order without talking about that. So I'm absolutely not going to force a survivor to talk about something in a court hearing. Um, you can definitely tell me about it and I can explain to you, you know, pros and cons of sharing it. But if you're telling me that you don't want to share that in court, um, that's always your choice. 
And something that I didn't mention when I was talking about the filing process, um, which I think is important for people to know when people have questions about is, whether it costs money to seek a protection order. And so generally speaking, the answer is no, there are not gonna be costs associated with that. And also with Pine Tree, whether services from a Pine Tree legal assistance attorney would cost some money and it does not, we do not charge for our services. So I think that's important for people to know as well.